Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to create something like this cliff procedurally, both the modeling and the texturing. So yeah, let's get into it. So here's the final result from the geometry. I'm gonna change this to smooth shaded. So as you can see, it's nothing too overpowered, but I wanted to share some techniques with you. So let's get started. I'm starting with the box and copying a few tubes to it with very low subdivisions. So like six subdivisions and merging over the top. You can change the scatter C to have a different shape. Then I'm remeshing it to a grid, like voxelizing the geometry. And doing an attribute blur, a peak, and a mountain, and then boolean intersecting to create some damage and some details, as you can see. Then I'm sharpening a bit and creating a VDB from polygons and converting it to VDB. So we get this result. Then from here, I'm creating some cuts. And the way I'm doing that is by copying, by placing a line along the cliff, resampling it to five segments, jittering a bit the, the points, Blasting the end point since I don't want to cut at the end and copying two points a few grids. In this case, I just have uh, as an offset the seed from the, the meta import node. Then I'm doing a boolean fracture and you can see by the name attribute. So I'm dividing these into five different parts with some jittering as you can see. Then I'm doing a little bit of an exploded view to pull apart the different shapes. Then everything is happening in this loop. Let's see if I can break it down properly. So we iterate over each named primitive. And let's see. First of all, I'm I'm creating a circle and fusing the points and orienting the, the creating the normals along the, the x-axis, so the out. And then I'm scaling to fit to the initial geometry and ray projecting it, as you can see in here. So I have the the shape around my the different parts of the cliff. Then I'm resampling it to a low resolution, peaking a little bit, deleting the points and creating a sweep, as you can see. Then I'm doing a lot subdivision, randomizing the Z scale with an attribute randomize and extruding randomly, as you can see, with that Z scale attribute in, in, here in the local control. Then I'm subdividing and doing a simple mountain and boolean out the, from the initial shape. So we get this sort of eaten look just to add some more edge damage, let's say. But in this case, surface damage, I should say. Then I'm creating a connectivity so I can blast away and measure the area and blast away the small parts. Since I'm doing a compiled loop, it's better than the, than the delete small parts, which is not compilable. Then I'm doing a simple transform, a randomized transform along the X and Z, as you can see with the FITO1 and the random function and I'm uh, randomly transforming in the X and Z axis. So that's it. Then in here I'm doing some mesh sharpening to mesh up a bit more the, the shapes. Then doing a VDB from polygons. And we get this. Then doing a volume vop to get some 
some details and it's pretty simple I shared many of these setups before but I'm doing in this case a shabby chef cellular and doing some distortion with the turbulence noise set to 3d noise and sparse convolution and playing with the frequency so I get this stretched look then I'm doing a fit range to affect less the shape and multiplying by a small number then just adding it to the density and for the VDB combine as you can see I'm doing a VDB combine in here to get this edge damage let's say it's always the same I'm creating a VDB from polygons in this case uh, with a bigger resolution then doing a convert VDB doing a blur VDB from polygons again to get more subdivisions then doing a mountain converting it to a VDB and in this case I'm not doing this so I can ignore that and doing a VDB combine as you can see then converting to VDB scaling it up a bit and in the end and in the end we get something like this so this is from the volume VOP as you can see it's sitting the shape up a lot and also doing those booleans with the extrusion to get these planar faces maybe it wasn't a very successful attempt but anyways I'm deleting the small parts to get rid of this floating geo and you can see I still have a class attribute in here if I want to affect the geometry in different ways then I'm calculating the slope so let me check that attribute as you can see so I can place some trees in there as you saw by the final result then I'm measuring the curvature and let's see the concavity and the convexity which I will be using for shading and then just file caching everything then giving it finally a name and we can move on to shading so let's have a look here at the, I'm importing the cliff and in the material library I have this rock cliff shader and let me see if I can set up something in here to show you a bit better let me just get rid of the displacement which will slow us down and we can have a look at the shading setup so I'm importing uh, I'm using the triplanar nodes the new Karma X style triplanar for every texture for the roughness the albedo displacement and normal so you here you can see the initial the initial texture which doesn't look very good then I'm doing a color correction so basically no this is the main color correction sorry so I'm basically desaturating the texture playing with the gamma and the exposure then I'm using the um, concavity I believe so the concavity and I'm mixing between two textures I mean it's the same texture but I'm mixing, be I'm mixing between two color correct nodes this one is more saturated as you can see and it will go along the concave areas as you can see in here then I'm loading another procedural mask in this case the convexity and again I'm missing I'm mixing with another color correct and getting these more uh, exposed areas along the along the convex areas let's say as you can see 
So that's basically it. Then I have the roughness and the normal connected to the same uh, settings of the initial triplanar nodes. And I also have some displacement, which I didn't use the original displacement of this material. I used another one. And I'm just remapping it between minus 0.5 and 0.5 and connecting it to the displacement. And that's about it. I can show you the scattering setup maybe. So we still have some time. As you can see the displacement is having some effects. I am also introducing some normal mapping just to add some more details since we don't have auto bump in Karma XPU or Karma at all. So now I have also some trees that I made in Speed Tree a long time ago and I keep using them but since it's just s such a small detail I can use those. I didn't have to make new ones. So let me see if this loads and as you can see we have the trees and this is really simple in a component geometry I'm importing both the, um, the tree and the tree proxy that I did you can have a look at the file and see how this is all set up but I've shared before this so I'm basically using the geometry variant index along with the the component geometry variants set to number in this case I have four trees then I'm creating the output nodes and an explore variant as you can see and then I'm using the instancer and giving it some materials and in the instancer it's pretty simple I'm just importing the oops I'm importing the cliff I should have done a low poly version to to use for scattering but then unpacking it to polygons, deleting some attributes, creating a P scale attributes with an attribute noise, in this, scale, in this case a very small scale. Then I'm doing an attribute remap on the slope because I was getting trees way out of the, the slope area. Then I'm doing a scatter on the slope then doing some vex to create the orient attribute to randomize the rotation along the y-axis and doing a jitter also which is just an attribute randomize between 0 and 1 so I can get some color correction on shading and that's what I'm doing in here so if I go to the leaves mat I'm loading that cheater attribute, remapping it to a small range, clamping it and placing it in the U. I could also use some, some gain in here to have some different exposures or so different uh, um, gain. But yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. And you can get these trees on my Patreon because I did them and I can share them. So. So that's about it, I hope you have enjoyed this one, a very quick overview. If you are having trouble recreating this, if you want to recreate it in the first place, you can have a look at the file on Patreon and you always support my work which is nice. And I hope to see you next time, let me know your thoughts in the comments, it's always nice to see some comments. Thank you.